Hey everybody, welcome to DTNS Experiment Week. All this week, DTNS is on vacation, summer vacation. So we handed over the feed to our friends to try some stuff out. Each of them has an experimental podcast idea that they'd like your feedback on. So please send us your feedback, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com or leave your feedback at patreon.com slash DTNS. We'll pass it along to them. And remember, each one of these is their podcast, so they are responsible for the content, but we hope you you enjoy it and we'll see you soon. Hello, DTNS audience. I'm Scott Johnson and I am here for Experiment Week. And uh, I thought today I would focus in on something that I'm uh, passionate about, but also I think would help some of you out there who are on the hunt for the best way to create art on digital tablets today. We're not gonna get into like the Wacom tablets and you know, just the the old way of using Photoshop on those. Those that's still, you know, not only viable, but still, at least in the professional space, probably the most common thing out there. But you're seeing more and more people migrate to tablets as a solution. And you've heard me talk on DTNS on Wednesdays, probably multiple times, about um, the iPad Pro that I use and what apps I use for it and kind of what the state of all of that is. But we've never really drilled down uh, deeper to, to get more into what is available out there because there's actually a lot of choices and there's reasons why you might want to try something over another. So we're going to look at both major platforms today. Uh, again, outside of the Windows slash desktop or even Mac solutions of, uh, you know, hooking up a big 22-inch tablet or whatever. We're going to focus more on iPad Pro and the Android equivalents, uh, specifically the OnePlus Pad, Fire HD 8, and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. I know there are other options out there, but these are the three that I think are the best performing devices when it comes to using art apps. Um, your mileage may vary. Also, the pens kind of wildly differentiate themselves from each other. I've not used all of them. So some of, that, some of those recommendations are going to come with those caveats. Just know that going in. Um, we'll start with iOS, or in this case, iPad OS, and the iPad, which currently dominates this space when it comes to portable digital art uh, stuff. And mostly it's the pairing of iPad Pro and the Pencil and Procreate. That threesome right there uh, has caused quite the stir in my world. It is uh, kind of the standard. And everywhere you go, you're going to see this way more than you're going to see any other combination. And I've talked probably more about this combination on the show, but just to reiterate, I'm a big fan of the Pro line, although I think all the iPads now are much more capable than they have been in the past. And the the iPad Air line in particular, which now can use a pencil, uh, will run great. It's You're going to deal with smaller screen real estate, uh, uh, real estate rather, but Procreate runs beautifully on there um, and is still priced ridiculously low compared to the value of the product. Um, when it was launched, it was $9.99. It is currently $12.99. I think that is a completely reasonable and still insanely low price, even with that increase. Uh, and it's pay for it once kind of thing. They don't do versioning upgrades where we're on version three, so now you need to belly up and pay again. I've had the same Procreate license since I bought it forever ago, like pre iPad Pros, when they were just people were using their fingers and lousy third party capacitive touch, you know, styluses, not a, not a great time in the business, but Procreate was there the whole time and I've never had to pay for it again. <laughs> I feel a little bad. I'll be honest. I think it's worth more. The only real bummer I have with Procreate is there is no desktop version for people who prefer to work on their Mac or PC, and there is no Android version of Procreate. They have chosen to plant their tree uh, squarely in the iPad OS space and not move. They do have an iPhone version of the software. It's a separate purchase. I don't find it horribly useful other than pulling it out and maybe a quick sketch or something I can use later, sync it with the cloud, bring it up, do some finishing work on tablet, but it's, it's, and it's okay for what it does, but I, I don't think it's a, a great solution for people looking to get serious about this screen real estate does matter. It's important. And that's why I recommend the iPad pro, uh, specifically the new M4 is so stinking fast and has more layers to work with within procreate and other apps than ever before. So it is still my number one recommendation of everything I'm going to mention today 
if it's in it's if it's within your grasp, this is the way to go. If you are in that ecosystem, that certainly helps. If you are one of these folks that's just like, sorry, can't do it, can't buy Apple stuff, I get it. That's why we're going to have some other solutions for you in this discussion today. So to reiterate, $12.99, Procreate, available for the iPad, uh, all the Pro lines, and now including anything that will take the stylus. Actually, it'll work on any iPad if you don't mind using your finger on the mini or whatever. But wherever the Pencil 2 or the Pencil Pro work, you are good to go with Procreate. And I know I've, t- I've said a lot on the show, I'll just give you a brief rundown of why I think this, why there's so much strength in that app. It's created by a bunch of artists, first of all, who really know what it's like to work in digital art. And it includes everything you would expect that you would need from maybe your time with Photoshop or something else. Um, lots and lots of layers, all kinds of effects on those layers, uh, the ability to uh, do a lot of blending, uh, download and use third party or even your own created brushes. You can make your own right there in the app. Comes with a suite of pretty good ones. In fact, the main one I use for inking because I do a lot of sort of comic work, is the standard studio nib or pen that's included when you open the app. It's already in there. I think I tweaked it a little bit, but that's the nice thing about Procreate. There's so much to tweak when it comes to how you want to use the thing, and that includes how you use gestures with the device, um, how the pen will behave, especially some of the newer features in the Pro as well as, hey, how's my line strength? Or how much curve do I want? Or how much assist do I need? Which I really appreciate in apps like this. Those are others that do some of this too, but apps that give you levels of stability to your line work uh, is very helpful as a sort of a, you know, for folks who need it. Imagine you're an artist who's, I don't know, getting older and getting a little shaky, or maybe you have a condition that creates that kind of shake or whatever. There are ways to build accessibility features within the app for yourself to match whatever you need. And of course, have none of that if you don't want that. So um, Procreate, kind of the bomb. And if you've never seen any work created on it, go search for Procreate art examples. You will find some amazing stuff. And it is kind of the de facto standard right now. Everybody is using it. Uh, That being said, doesn't mean there are other options on the iPad that are pretty good. My second choice is Adobe Fresco. The reason I like it is it is unlike their their mobile editions of Photoshop, Illustrator, and other stuff. They're they they're fine, but they're not as feature filled as their desktop siblings. And they are also they require the sub to the entire you know you got to do the the Adobe CC sub to get them uh, or to to launch them, I suppose. And Adobe Fresco does not need a sub. You can just get in there. It does feature in app purchases. So it is free to download, but they will very quickly say, oh, you want access to more layers? Well, you're going to have to pay. Actually, I actually don't know if they charge for layers, but they will charge for features in the in the device, and it might be worth it to you. It's got a really good drawing engine, especially a sketching engine, and uh, it's very fast performance. Actually, I actually like it as a secondary app when I just want to whip something up real quick in a sketch form and easily port it over to Procreate to do finishing work. I, I, I'm assuming Adobe would prefer I not do that and just use their app, but... Um, it's not nearly as featureful as, uh, as Procreate. And like I said, Procreate is a one-time price and you're in and you're done. And there's no other, no other money asking down the road. Affinity, uh, photo, uh, version two is where we're at right now on that. That app is free with the desktop version. That goes for Designer 2 as well. Designer 2 is like their version of Adobe Illustrator. I don't really work in vector. So no, I'm not going to include any of the vector-based apps. Some, some include some raster imaging and some vector imaging, but I'm not going to focus on that because I just don't, I don't use them personally. So, you know, what I'm, what I replicate with my digital art is kind of traditional art, whether it would be something on Bristol board or a canvas or something. That's, that's what these are, they're geared toward, not necessarily, you know, mathematically correct, uh, infinitely scalable vertices like you get with um like you get with illustrator and and designer too but the nice thing about buying the desktop apps is you have full interoperability between them that's what i use now on desktop instead of photoshop and illustrator so being able to go back and forth between those two is very very convenient um the nice thing about procreate i should mention 
is if you need to, if you're somebody who works in an office and you can do the art on Procreate, but you need to be able to futz with it or, or dork around with it in desktop mode, um, the, it, all the layers, all the stuff, it's all kept, uh, you know, the integrity of all of that is kept. And you used to export it to a PSD, a Photoshop native file, and open it in Photoshop or open it in any other app that supports PSDs, which Affinity does as well. So you're you're in good shape there. A lot of these apps, I should say most of these apps, will have that kind of exportability. So you don't need to worry too much about format wars and stuff like that. It's all kind of become, uh, you know, the PSD format has, has been a standard for a long time. So it's nice that these all support that. Uh, the other option is an app called Inspire Pro. That one's interesting. It has one of the fastest engines in the App Store. That's pretty high praise, I think, because most of them are pretty fast. I think Procreate is plenty fast, but that means creatives get an incredibly fluid, natural drawing experience right there. Like you're not you're not waiting for a lot of pen lag, and it's even more prominent or more pronounced in the newer devices. Um, but if you're trying to do oil, if you're trying to just do spray paint effects, if you're trying to do um, simple inking, that sort of thing, uh, there's a lot of creative control happening with Inspire Pro. It's a fine product and is only $9.99. Um, so you're going to be paying you're going to be paying less for that than than some of this other stuff. And again, a one-time price. They're not going to nickel and dime you in there, which I, I appreciate about those guys. And next up on the iPad side of things, we have Clip Studio Paint. You may have heard of Clip Studio before. It is prominent on desktops as well. And a lot of comic artists use it uh, working in the comics industry. So comic books and, and uh, you know, newspaper comics, that sort of thing. Probably best in class when it comes to ink. Um, they just really, their, their ink engine is really something. There's one major drawback. Um, the interoperability with the desktop version is great. It is also available on Android, so you have a lot of choices here with Clip Studio. And uh, I think it used to be called Anime Studio way back in the day. The name changed because it became, I don't know, less about making anime or... Ma oh, no, it was called Manga Studio. Sorry. Um, I think they just wanted to broaden its appeal and make it less subcategory. But anyway, uh, it needs a sub to use. Um, there is three months free before they charge. But then all the pricing options are super nuts. They're kind of all over the place and there's different ways to pay. You can do a flat rate for the version you're on. And then when a new version comes out, you pay again a flat rate. It's a little expensive. You can pay monthly subs, uh, yearly subs to save a little money on the top. If I'm honest, I think their pricing structure is a little confusing and kind of all over the place. I recommend you go read it carefully before you make a decision on Clip Studio Paint. The actual software, though, amazing. Very good stuff, especially if you're working in ink or ink-like uh, illustration. Clip Studio Paint is kind of um, a bit of a standard in that regard. It's very strong. All right, now let's get to the Android side of the thing. Uh, I'll, before I do that, just a re quick recap. Procreate, number one pick, all right, on the iPad side. Adobe Fresco in a close second. Affinity Photoshop, or excuse me, Affinity Photo 2 also right up there. Inspire Pro is a great alternative. Pixelmator, I should mention also as a desktop option. Did I not mention Pixelmator? I meant to. Uh, that one is also just $10. And Pixelmator is a pretty strong contender. I would put it up there with Inspire Pro. Uh, and then finally, Clip Studio Paint for, uh, for, a, for a good subscription model. Um, it should be noted there are a ton more, like probably another 30 I could mention that exist. Everybody's everybody's gunning for Procreate right now. None of them quite hold up to it. And this is just my top six or so. Yeah, six total. On the Android side, you have choices on the tablets. This is one thing that makes that unique. Um, on the Apple side, obviously, you're, you just have, you know, a choice within the iPad line. But on the Android side, I've picked three that I like. One plus pad is currently my favorite overall. And the reason for that is speed, screen real estate, uh, illustrate, uh, what am I trying to say? Screen real estate is the word I'm looking for. And it also um, is very fast and renders things out beautifully. It's very, very quick. Um, you want that, right? That's like maybe your number one consideration is lack of latency. And that one by most measures and accounts uh, performs the best out of everything right now. So the OnePlus pad 
is the current leader there. I have to admit, though, I have not had direct experience with these three tablets. All right. I've used Android tablets before. They were mostly in the past. But uh, I'm basing this mostly on uh, other reviews and also uh, recommendations from friends. So the OnePlus Pad, good choice. Uh, behind that, funny enough, in second place, I'd give it to the Amazon Fire HD 8. It's a speedy little bugger as well and uh, does real well. This is not your kid's tablet. This is a decent full-blown tablet, although it is a fork of Android, uh, but should still run the apps. I'm going to recommend no, uh, without too much trouble. Uh, and Samsung Galaxy Tab S9, a close third. Um, really, the lines are blurred here. I think all three of these would do well for you, but if there is a standout, it's the OnePlus Pad. If anyone out there is using that and wants to write in and talk about it more, I'd be, I'd be curious what your experience has been. But here are the breakdowns for those uh, for those devices uh, in terms of software. There is no Procreate, so sorry to everybody for that. They've been, you know, people beg them to do it, to port it, and they just don't. I don't know why they don't. I don't know why they never want to. I mean, they've said probably as much why they don't want to, but I think, you know, the focus on a single platform just gives them a lot of control, creative control over over everything and, and a certain compatibility that they can maintain by just focusing. It's like being a PlayStation or an Xbox exclusive, you know, it's that sort of idea. But yeah, I, I part of me does hope one day it, it escapes the, the exclusivity and becomes more available to more people because I think it is that great. Uh, but let's start with Ibis Paint X. This is a free app with in-app purchases. Um, this is a good solution. I would put this right up there with Inspire Pro and Pixelmator in terms of equivalency, not the best choices, uh, on iOS, but the I think the best choice on the Android side. I think there's real strength to it. Right behind that, we have Sketchbook, which was originally developed by Autodesk. I don't know how that works because I think they still own it, but it's some subsidiary now, or maybe they sold it off. I couldn't find how this definitively worked. It doesn't really matter because the software is still roughly the same and they've improved it over time. Uh, this is free to download with in-app purchases. It is also on iOS, so if you've got some sort of cross back and forth there, that's, that works well. Lots of great export tools. Its biggest strength is actually kind of in the name, even though it does, you know, full color and lots of different brushes and all of that and all the layering. Sketchbook is really good at sketching. Their pencil, uh, for lack of a better term, pencil engine is very, very good and lots and lots of options there. Um, some of that will depend on the tablet you get, which again, I can't speak to too strongly on the an Android side, but how, how, uh, in depth you get with like angling your pencil and how much pressure will play a factor here, that sort of thing. That's where, that's one of their strengths, at least on the iPad. Um, the one plus pad is known for having uh, more depth in that regard. And if that's the case, sketchbook is a good choice. Uh, again, free to download with some in-app purchases don't always love that because it's usually they lock stuff you need behind that wall and you gotta you know you're gonna spend some money but maybe not in the way you want to i wish all of these guys just sold them flat out as software i don't like i don't like any of these as a service i should mention that infinite painter also uh free with in-app purchases this is one i've not had any experience with but i've had multiple people uh while asking about it in the last couple of weeks come forward and say oh i love that one that one's amazing it's my it's my go-to so I'm not really sure even where to rank this one. I haven't had any experience with it, but apparently it is um, a strong contender on the platform, on the on the uh, Android platform, and is uh, also, you know, some stuff locked behind it and app purchases, but apparently fairly generous with its base features. Uh, this is one where I feel okay recommending it without too much experience because you just simply have to install it and try it out. It's free. So if you don't like it, you can huck it. Uh, you're not locked in too hard. Um, at number four on the Android uh, side of things, Clip Studio Paint, once again, rearing its head. This is the iOS, um, equi you know, the Android equivalent of the uh, same thing on iOS. They also have it on desktop. And all the same issues I mentioned with the pricing and buying are very weird and kind of scattershot. But I'm telling you, if this thing ends up being your jam, you will find a way to make it fit. Um of the you know of the most of the two most complete packages here clip studio paint and ibis paint x are my two picks uh to go with it really just depends on which pricing structure you're more comfortable with finally one that i'm also not super familiar with but i'm hearing really good things is something called artflow and i think artflow is also multi-platform um 
it doesn't quite make my top five or six on the iOS stuff in terms of like what I can tell about its features. But again, this is one I haven't fiddled with too much. I actually plan to. I downloaded it last night, so I will I will be messing with it. Uh, but for this episode, um, just to say this seems like a strong contender. All of the feature sets are there. They, they, they claim all this stuff they can do, and I have friends who like it, who are, you know, in the business. So I think you can definitely not go wrong here because it is also free and offers in-app purchases. That is mostly the way I found on the Android side for the strongest uh, art apps. Um, there are way less of these. It's just not a focus of that de- those devices. It's unfortunate, but they, uh, those that exist are fine, and most of them are free with in-app purchases. Very few of them are just a premium $10, $12 product, which is a little bit of a bummer. Um, I used to be a big fan of like, oh, it's free, but I only have to buy the features I want. This is, you know, I used to think that was the model that I was going to like the most in this stuff and gaming and lots of ways. And I kind of had a bit of a swing back the other way. I just wish some things would just be like, here they are, pay for it. I don't, on the other hand, I don't want to just go in perpetuity and never pay ever again. And I, that's why I feel bad with Procreate. I don't know how their, their business model works long term. It's mostly on the, the back of just being awesome. So everybody keeps buying it new. But for those of us who have had it forever, I, you know, I feel like I owe them something. So maybe the best middle ground is version three is out, buy it. Oh, version four, 12 bucks. But then I know they don't want to fragment versions and they don't want to fragment users. And they also don't want to support existing versions forever for those who don't want to pay for the upgrade. So I, I know these things are complicated and it's kind of all over the map, but on the Android side, if you see this as a positive, the good news is most of this stuff is free with in-app purchases if you're cool with that. Most, not all, but most. Clip Studio is basically that, but you know, the in-app purchase is a, is a gnarly big subscription or a big expensive one-time purchase. Anyway, that's basically it. That rounds it out. So to reiterate on the Android side, OnePlus Pad, if you can do it, Fire HD 8 and Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 are good alternatives. And the apps I like are Ibis Paint X, Sketchbook, Infinite Painter, Clip Studio Paint, and Artflow. Um, I'll put all of these in some kind of show notes so that uh, Roger uh, and Tom can have this kind of out there with the episode in case there's, uh, you know, you missed anything I said. And I am open to your questions. If you have any very specific question about any of this stuff, especially the stuff I really know and have dug into, I've, I've used Clips, uh, Studio Paint a ton. I have used Pixelmator a lot. I use Affinity Photo constantly and Adobe Fresco a lot lately and Procreate a lot, like a ton. So if there's any questions about this sort of stuff, even Sketchbook, I'm happy to answer them uh, in ways that this you know, short episode of... Uh, for experiment we maybe didn't answer every every possible question um but please reach out to me and let me know i'm happy to answer uh you can do that through dtns or you can com- contact me directly on my website over at frogpants.com that'll do it for me i can't wait to see you guys on the next wednesday edition of dtns hope you're having a great august and we'll see you next time mm-hmm.